I'm pretty sure you've heard how important habits are for your health and personal development. But thinking about your coding habits can have a profound impact in your career as well. If it's true that you're the sum of your habits, then your code must be the sum of your coding habits. And working on these will not only put a lot of time back in your pocket, but they'll definitely level up your career as well. And I don't know about you, but I could use a promotion. Take the first habit I'll share with you today, for example. And that's the habit of breaking down tasks into smaller ones. Let's say your manager asks you to build a first run experience for the app. You're happy to do it, should be a matter of building a couple of UI screens and you're done. And then as you actually start doing the work, you realize a couple of things. Eh, it's actually six screens you needed to make. Bit more than you expected, but should otherwise be fine. Oh, and you need to build a pagination system for that. Okay, looks like you'll need to render animations and you don't have a framework for that yet. Oh, and we'll need to persist whether the user has seen it or not to determine when to show it. Assuming that time is not a problem, and it usually is, you push through this and you create a PR for it. And guess what? That senior engineer on your team is going to have opinions on all of these different things you have to do and your PR is going to become a mess. Breaking down your tasks into smaller, more manageable chunks will make your reviews a lot easier. And it will also force you to consider things like writing more generic and reusable component, but there's a catch. This advice is flawed if you try to apply it too early. Before splitting the task too much, try and piece together a rough draft for it first. This is because tackling subtask number six will surface something you forgot to consider when doing subtask number one, and you will need to go back and address that. If you go in and create a PR for number one without having at least prototyped the big picture, it's very likely you'll miss the target when you try and put everything together. Unless, of course, it's something really straightforward. So having that draft slash proof of concept slash prototype will give you the big picture, and then you can actually extract subtasks as their own isolated changes and polish those individually. The thing about this habit is that it basically feels like cheating. It's not super hard to start developing and the benefits are endless. So hopefully you can see the power of developing habits around your coding. And the beautiful thing about habits is that you don't need to put in a ton of effort up front. You can start implementing them slowly and see them as these sort of tiny incremental improvements to your coding skills. James Clear develops this idea in his book Atomic Habits and he calls it the 1% rule. The 1% rule rule states that over time, the majority of the rewards in a given field will accumulate to the people, teams, and organizations that maintain a 1% advantage over the alternatives. You don't need to be twice as good to get twice the results. You just need to be slightly better. And the classic example to illustrate this is with finance. Just think about the power of compound interest. If you can just get 1% better every day, after a year, you would be 30 times better. Not 30%, 30 times better. That's an amazing return for just putting in the effort to get 1% better each day. Now, it might be useful to think about how we can actually measure that 1% when it comes to code. It's a very subjective and hard to measure discipline. So you can start with simple things like the number of pull requests you create, how much PR feedback you get from others, how many of those comments come from that senior engineer, or if you're working alone on projects of your own, just how fast you can check out features from your to-do list. But in the world of software development, those probably won't be enough. So I like to complement them with things like how often you feel overwhelmed, how often you feel productive, and accomplished? And what does your manager and team think about your performance? It's always a good idea to ask them for feedback. And this is a good segue into the next habit. Your brain is made to have ideas not to store them. And in our case, our brains should have the space to problem solve, not just try to remember stuff. But here's the deal breaker. You still need to have information handy to be a good performing programmer. I would know this. I struggle to remember even my address or phone number. And I've seen opportunities fly by because I didn't have the information at hand. I didn't write it down back then. I didn't remember it on the spot. And I missed an opportunity to help someone. So I really love the idea of keeping a dev journal. Here's one way I love to look at this. You know how we use source control in software development? So things like Git? Well, one of the biggest reasons we do is to keep track of changes in our code and have the ability to refer back to it, which is super useful, but code itself is only one of many dimensions of being a software engineer. Wouldn't it be great if you could apply some sort of source control to all of the other things you need to do? Things like organizing specs and designs and tracking your progress on them, conversations about the product and technical solutions that people brainstorm, documentation that proved helpful or references to those obscure stack overflow threads that solved your oddly specific specific problem one day. Things like contacts. There's a wide array of people responsible for a wide array of things that can maybe help you with some stuff at some point. Getting in the habit of taking a few notes every day about things like these before closing your laptop or heading home is a really underrated skill. The amount of value you're able to provide to your team suddenly doubles or triples. First, because you suddenly have a sort of bird's eye view of everything that has been relevant for you to deliver whatever piece of software. And second, you put yourself in a position where you can help your team members a lot better for having that information handy. And guess what? 
having impact through others is another fast track for promos. But I'll come back to that since there's an even better way to accomplish that. One final literal hack to upgrade this habit is to share those notes. Not everything, of course, but the things you think your team would find valuable to have around. Type safety first. You might be familiar with this concept already, but just to give you a quick overview, generally speaking, in software, things can go wrong in two different moments. First, at the time you build and you get those 1,498 errors, or when you get a successful build, you try it out and the code you wrote does not do what you wanted it to do. Which one would you rather have? Okay, assuming it's not 1,490 something errors, but just a couple of them, it's always better to find out if something's wrong at build time because it comes so much sooner than runtime. This is also known as type safety, getting in the habit of playing into the strengths of the language so that the compiler helps you identify if you're doing something wrong is huge. The simplest example is, if you have a limited set of possible valid values for a variable, you could of course use something like a string and check that the value is valid using a comparison. But the smarter thing to do would be to create an enum with the possible values. Then the compiler will guarantee that you will never get a value that is not within that list. That is of course a very simple example, but if you consistently apply this consideration to every line of code you write, it's one of the best investments you can make because you significantly reduce the number of things that can go wrong once your code is out in the wild, and therefore you save yourself and your team a lot of time. And again, who couldn't use more time? I love this next habit. It's not exclusive to coding, but it's so good that I needed to include it. And that is eating the frog first. So we talked about breaking down your tasks, but you can take this a step further by being strategic about how you start tackling the smaller chunks. There are studies still out there debating whether or not we actually have a limited amount of willpower in a given day. But we can't deny that we fundamentally give up on the things that we don't find engaging or when we're feeling drained. And we're a lot more likely to procrastinate when this happens. This is going to be true even within coding. Some things will be naturally less engaging than others, and needing to get these done can be demotivating. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about just disliking a task, but we can always be a bit smarter about how we manage our energy. There's an awesome metaphor in the productivity world for this called eat the frog first. Visual is horrible, of course, but that's also what you'll remember. And it's basically the process of identifying your most difficult task of the day, that thing you're dreading to do, and completing it before you do any other work. Now, I know not everyone is a morning person, so a more generic way to interpret this is to save the hard tasks for when you know you have the energy to tackle them, ideally with the least chance of getting distracted. For some people, this is impact mornings, but feel free to do some experimenting yourself. At the risk of sounding like your average tech bro, I'll be so bold as to advise you to meditate. The underlying challenge I'm trying to address here is training your ability to remain focused. Think of it like this. You're aiming to make a living on a skill that literally depends on your ability to focus. And I know that's also the case for many other disciplines, but it's particularly true for ours. And we're rarely intentional about putting aside some time to sharpen that skill. Do this and you're already ahead of many people in this regard. But it's not really a competition with anyone other than who you were yesterday. It doesn't have to be specifically meditation, but I found it's something that really works for me. And if the coding benefits weren't enough, it also helps me deal with things like anxiety and imposter syndrome as well. Now, I promised an even better way to provide value to your team, and that is best summarized with the words driving clarity, proactively helping your team push through uncertainty and turn those unknown problems into solutions. I actually have a full video on how to get better at this, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, you should definitely go check that out next. Thank you so much for watching and consider subscribing if this is something you found valuable. I would love to have you on board and in any case, I'll see you in the next one.